G'day guys, it's Tim Guest here, Australia's Leading Financial Educator and Managing Director of Infinite Wealth. Thanks so much for joining me, just back home uh, now after a couple of days of doing events. Thought I'd knock out this Facebook Live uh, from the comfort of my kitchen. We got my little dog in the background, Oscar's gonna be my assistant today. So we're here to do boot camp for your bank account. Now of course, it's been three months now that we've been doing this for, right? And I just love to have gotten all the feedback that we've gotten from people out there, from the results that they've been causing, and the freedom that it's given them, the security and peace of mind around their finances. So please keep it coming in. We love to get your feedback. If you like this video, like it, comment, all that kind of stuff. And the only thing that I really ask in return, if you get value out of watching this video, then please share it so that your friends and family can get that value too. And we're here to do step 11 of the boot camp for your bank account, all right? And primarily what I wanna talk about tonight is tax, okay? So, you know, there's that saying that they have, right? There's only, you know, the only thing certain life is death and taxes. Well, you know, you see my comment before, right? Not everyone's dead yet, so we don't know about that one. Tax, I'm not so sure about that one either. Now, of course, when it comes to tax, there's all sorts of taxes that you're gonna pay just by participating in society, okay? So things like excise, you know, fuel excise, you know, tax, levies, all that kind of stuff that just comes in when, when you're making normal purchases. But the one in particular that I want to talk about tonight is income tax. So the tax that you pay on the income you earn. And we want to make sure, and I want to give you some tips to, uh, I guess, help in minimizing the amount of tax you pay. And guys, we've got to get straight about this, right? The single largest contribution you make is to the government, and rightly so, we've got to run our society, right? But at the same time, you shouldn't pay more than you have to, okay? So how can we effectively minimize that tax, get that number down as low as you possibly can, and at the same time, while minimizing it, we also want to make sure that we put that money to use, okay? Have it and utilize it, take as much advantage of it as possible. And in particular, there's three things that I want to talk about. So the number one thing is this, is A, you want to get your tax done early as possible, right? now. In reality, we all intend to normally do this. And of course, there are some people out there that we know may have not done their tax for the last couple of years. Stop avoiding it, just get in there and get it done, all right? You might find you get some money back or at least it's gonna give you that freedom to move forward so you're not kind of dragging around that uh, that baggage with you anymore, all right? But you want first thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you get your tax done as early as possible. Now, the other, thing, the other two things that I wanna talk about, one of them most people don't know anything about. So, for most people, typically what happens is because they're paying tax on the anticipated salary that they're gonna earn. Say you're gonna earn $80,000 a year, you start paying your tax in installments in advance, okay? So you pay your tax equivalent to $80,000 a year. For most people, they're gonna have some deductions. Now, of course, the basic tenet of our tax system here in Australia is that if you're using money to generate an income, you can deduct that, okay? Now, that's not a wide sweeping statement. Of course, there's caveats and rules and all disclaimers and all that kind of stuff, right? But you gotta make sure that you're gonna check what you need to check so that you can get anything back. Hence, speak to a specialist like an accountant, a tax agent, all right? So, what most people don't know though, is that that money, that tax refund that you do to get back at the end of every year, you simply don't have to wait until the end of the year to get that money back. Most people don't know there's something called a tax variation. Now this particular applies to people who every year regularly get a refund. Now, maybe you're using your car for work, maybe you've got an investment property or something along those lines. For most people in those circumstances, they're typically getting back about two and a half thousand or maybe up to $10,000 a year back in tax. But rather than waiting until the end of the year to get that money back, did you know you can get it back every single week? Or maybe every single fortnight? Okay, so that's what I'm talking about when it comes to a tax variation. Now essentially a tax variation is an application that you fill out, send off to the ATO. Pretty simple to do, however, I do recommend that you get your accountant to do this because look, they've got the expertise to know that you get this right. I mean, you don't wanna get too much money back because that's gonna leave you with a bill at the end of the day, right? So, like I said, get the assistance of someone like an accountant to help you do this. You can lodge that tax variation with the, with the uh, the ATO, and then what happens is rather than getting a big fat tax check back at the end of the year, the government is just gonna take less tax out of your pay every single week. So they notify your employer or amend what your pay PAYG uh, installments are if you're someone who's self-employed, and rather than sending that money off to the government, you're gonna get to keep more of it in your back pocket. Now, if it's up to 10 grand like it would be with maybe like an investment truck, 10 grand a year, that's 200 bucks a week. 
200 bucks a week, every single week in your pocket, man, you can put it to much better use than what the ATO is going to use it for. And they're not going to pay you interest on it either, right? See, 200 bucks a week, you could use that extra money and maybe put it as your voluntary contribution into superannuation. Access tax brackets up to a third of what you're currently paying. Maybe you could use that extra 200 bucks a week, or maybe it's only if you've got a car, maybe it's only an extra 50 bucks a week. Maybe you could put that into a credit card debt that you got, you're probably paying 20% per annum as an interest rate on. Okay, or maybe even that money, whether it's 100 or 200 bucks a week, could be used to buy another investment property. There are much better things that you could be doing with that money to advance your financial circumstances rather than leaving it sitting with the ATO. Okay, so tax variation, like I said, for people that regularly get tax refunds back, it's something that you definitely want to talk about, look into. You know, depending on your account, it might only cost you, if they're familiar with your situation, maybe cost you a couple hundred bucks to get done. Okay. The third thing that I want to talk about with respect to tax is depreciation. The reason why I bring this up, if you are someone who invests in property, probably the single largest deduction that most people miss out on or just plain forget about, don't claim when it comes to investment property is depreciation. As a bit of a secret, I've even heard about accountants that don't claim this stuff. They're meant to know what they're doing, right? Okay, so depreciation, how depreciation, basically I'm just going to give you a rough overview of how this works. If you own an investment property, an investment property depreciates, it reduces in value over time. What I hear you say, I thought you buy an investment property because it's gonna go up in value. Well, there's two elements to an investment property. You've got the block of land and you've got the house. Okay, the block of land is what technically is increasing in value over time. The house, just like my laptop, just like a car, just like your mobile phone, depreciates in value over time. And the amount of money that it depreciates every year is something that you're allowed to claim as a tax deduction on an investment property. It does require you to get something like a depreciation schedule. Okay, so this is something that a licensed quantity surveyor would need to complete. You know, you're probably talking maybe around about $500 to get one of those done. But it'll then tell you or tell your accountant every single year to the dollar what they can claim is that depreciation. I mean, a lot of the time, I know for many people that I work with, you know, they might be in the first, you know, a lot of clients we recommend buy new properties because that's where you get the high amount of depreciation. You, know, you might be getting up to ten, twelve, thirteen thousand dollars worth of depreciation tax benefit in the first year alone. Okay, so significant tax advantages that you can take advantage or you can utilize. Uh, not only to minimize your tax, but put it to better use than the ATO. Okay, guys, so that's look, that's step 11 in terms of the boot camp for your bank account. We only got one step to go. Okay, got a bit of a cracker for you next week. It's gonna finish off these 12 steps. Once again, guys, please share the video. Please put your comments, questions. Let me know how you like it, love it, hate it, whatever it is. Wanna get your feedback. Please have a great th rest of your Thursday night. Enjoy your weekend. I look forward to speaking to you next week. Thanks, guys. You have a great week.